Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another liqueur video or liqueur related video. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do right now is make some more cornelian cherry liqueur. And if you've watched, uh, I think we've got like three or four liqueur videos out there, you would have seen the cornelian cherries. These are the cornelian cherries that I have in my liqueur cabinet right now and they're pretty much spent and i've shown you guys these ones and i mentioned i believe during the previous liqueur video that uh these guys were spent and i had to get my my hands on some more cornelian cherries and whatnot and luck be during my one of my walks around the neighborhood i came across a cornelian cherry tree okay and the timing was fantastic because cornelian cherries um, or ripen towards the end of fall, uh, end of uh, summer, uh, beginning of fall, right? So this is the perfect time. September is really September. October is getting a little late. August is too early. So September is when cornelian cherries ripen in my part of the world anyway. So I came across some cornelian cherries, okay? And I picked some and I made some cornelian cherry jam. And let me show you the cornelian cherries when they're raw. And I'll show it to you in the jar that we're going to make, okay? These are the cornelian cherries. And I have a handful, just this much out to eat. And it's very, uh, very tart. And it has a seed in it. So you're looking for, if you're eating them, you're looking for the more red, more darker colored ones. Because those are the ones, oops, those are the ones that are a little sweeter. They're not as tart okay you can just pop them the ones that are they're delicious the ones that are more orange color let me show you beside each other so if you ever come across one you know what to eat and what not to eat right or these ones are good too they're tart take a look at the color difference right so this is the ripe one and hopefully this will focus and this is the more tart one so you can eat the tart one as well and let me show you the seeds this is the seeds that they have in them right and i've been keeping some of these seeds on the second batch because this is the second time i went back to the cornelian cherry with the first batch we ended up making some jams but the tart ones you can eat as well very tart and like really very tart if you like tart cornelian cherries is the way to go and this is the right one okay very delicious let me put this guy here and what i'm doing with the seeds right now because um, a few years ago we picked some cornelian cherries and we make cornelian cherry jam and stuff like this and we took some of the seeds that we we're eating so these are the seeds right dry them and then planted them for the next season and we ended up planting i believe four seeds two of them sprouted we had little trees like this like little uh what do you call them uh I forget what they're called when they're just coming up right so two of them came up like this big one of them died off one of them lived and we planted that in one of our family's home and that's like a young tree now and that's giving cornelian cherries as well so cornelian cherries is something that we really do love and they are hard to come by uh, in my part of the world anyway uh, it's something that uh, um, if you're Iranian, Persian, in the Arab world, I believe too, and I believe in Indian stuff, cornelian cherries are uh, treasured sort of, right? And what I ended up doing was uh, in the first batch that I picked like about three weeks ago, uh, three weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, ended up making some cornelian cherry jam, right? And this is phenomenal. Like, there are certain parts of the world that they will kill for this. <laughs> it's super delicious, right? You sort of eat it with a spoon. 
you can put it on uh, use it for pastries as well we do but we have to de-seed it right so if we end up getting uh, when we end up getting large harvest we do make the jam and run it through the mill and take out the seeds and we use that for some of the pastries that we end up making right but this is what it looks like when you pull it out of the the jar the jam jar right Here, let me show it to you take a look and it's fairly solid like a mine became you know it wasn't i let the juice evaporate i wanted i wanted this to be sort of a uh, complementing the tea right and this is what it looks like and there are seeds in there of course right and what i do is uh, when i'm drinking tea if i need something sweet as well as tart because it does still have that tart flavor to it i just you know take a little bit of this sometimes you can throw this in your tea as well and mix it up and it gives it a sort of a cornelian cherry taste right phenomenal like really absolutely phenomenal so instead of pastries you can just eat the jam if you want to have some with a spoon now i have a couple of seeds in my mouth right now right and i want to spit this out those out as soon as i show you this part what you can also do is take the cornelian cherries and just put them in your tea and mix it up and it gives it a little bit of tartness to it and just drink the tea and eat the cornelian cherries every now and then right take a look and you can just grab a cornelian cherry and just eat this basically what you're doing is flavoring your tea right now i didn't go through you know we didn't do a live stream for this cornelian cherry when we made the jam but i did post up the pictures of how much we harvested how much jams we got okay and these are the seeds you end up getting okay and these ones you can't plant you cook them up right so you just throw those away and i sort of keep this little container out when i'm drinking tea when i make the jam i sample it right as far as the liqueur is concerned i'm gonna consolidate these right let me take a look at the color this one is sort of pale it's spent right so i'm gonna get rid of this one i tasted this one and it wasn't it didn't have the cornelian flavor to it the fruit anymore right the fruit was still very sharp alcoholic this is a little bit darker here let's do a comparison take a look i'm not sure if you can see it through the reflections but this one is darker than this and this one is the darkest one i have right now so still retains a little bit of the flavor so i might keep this i'm going to sample these okay so i got to take care of that regarding the liqueur cabinet reason we're going to take care of it because we're about to make some more cornelian cherry liqueur and this is how much we got right <laughs> this was the second time that we went picking so let me show you this so this is almost a two liter jar right take a look so all i'm gonna do now is just add sugar to this cane sugar and pour the vodka on top okay so let's do this let's bring our plate here so when we're pulling the sh uh, pouring the sugar we don't get uh, spillage all over the place it contains into the into the plate here right so this is a two liter jar uh, almost a two liter jar i believe they're 1.9 liters and that comes out to what is 1.9 liters now i picked this batch yesterday and i just put it in the fridge i we gave it a wash laid it out to dry and then put it in the fridge so if you see 
you know, there's a little bit of condens condensation here. That's because they were cold in the fridge, okay? And obviously when we're making liqueur, we're not gonna put it in the fridge, we're gonna leave it out. Okay, I just didn't want, you know, I wasn't sure if I was gonna get to making the liqueur today or I was gonna make it tomorrow. So I didn't want any of these things because some of them are very ripe, so it's gonna give a nice flavor out. I didn't want any of them to go moldy, right? It's while sitting out waiting for me to make enough time to make this liqueur, okay? So 1.9 liters, what does that come out to? Let me see if I brought, where's my glasses? Here's my glasses. Nice. Let's see if we can figure out how many ounces that is. Fifty-six ounces? Probably a little bit more. Okay. But it's got fifty-six here, and that takes it to the rim, really, right? So I got a basically a 1.9 liter jar or whatever that is, 60 ounce jar, and I'm filling it up full of cornelian cherries up to the 56 ounce uh, line here, right? And liters wise, uh, that's gonna be uh, about the one point or 1 1.24, 1.7 liter mark. Okay, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put at least one cup of uh, cane sugar in here. Okay, so we got our cane sugar here as before, right? Organic cane sugar, and I find cane sugar is sweeter than just processed white sugar, and it's better for you. I don't like processed white sugar, so I'm going to take this is one cup. I'm gonna take one cup of this. Let's put this guy down, make sure we're not gonna do any sugar spillage, right? So that's one cup, not a little bit of spillage on the side. I'm gonna put another half a cup in this, okay? So one and a half cups, and this is my half a cup. Is, this a little, is it half a cup? It's a little bit more than half a cup. And this thing is gonna be good for us for a few years, right? These ones that we see here, the older uh, jars that we have with the Cornelian cherries, they're basically, the oldest one is around, probably nine years old. The newer one or the most recent one that I have, this one's probably at least six or seven years old, right? So this guy here that we're about to make, this thing's gonna last us about five years, okay? Depending on how fast we go through it. And Cornelian cherry liqueur, absolutely phenomenal. Really, it, it there's a very unique taste to it, okay? So all we gotta do right now is, and as before, I'm just using just straight out uh, absolute vodka. I know people have recommended uh, for me to go to, uh, what is it, Costco and stuff, and a lot of the liqueur uh, videos that we put out, and I think I've got four liqueur videos out there. A lot of people have been commenting that I should just go to Costco and buy uh, their generic vodka because it's Grey Goose that makes it. But in my part of the world, in British Columbia, you can't buy it spirits in the Costco so I don't get that fantastic deal alcohol is extremely expensive here this is a 40 ouncer okay 1.14 liters should be 40 ounces okay and this thing cost me here um, I just bought it today $40 approximately $36 plus the taxes and whatnot right so it's quite expensive so all I'm gonna do is just pour this on top, right? And if we have any vodka left, we're gonna to top up, and we will have vodka left, we're gonna to top up the lemon liqueur we have, okay? And 
and you top it up to the top, right? So all the cornelian cherries are buried, are under the alcohol, okay? And I'm going to put the lid back on it. And you can give it a little shake if you want. I don't shake it too rigorously. Dialectic. <laughs> it's nice to have this back. I was very pleasantly surprised to find the Cornelian cherry tree. And no one in my this part really knew what it was when we were picking it. People are like, what is that? What do you do with it? And I said, oh, I'll make jam. I'm going to make liqueur in the second pick that we did. And they're like, oh, wow, that's cool. And gave them a taste of the of the cherries and it's really tart and they're all like oh, so tart so tart right and you can give it a shake right but that's okay right now take a look the sugar's there and this will sit i'm going to put this in the sun it's right now we're in uh fall solstice it's september 21st right so last day of fall first day of uh last day of summer first day of fall so the sun is not as strong we're not getting as many sunny days so i'm going to leave this out in our sunroom so it gets you know a day or two of sun i think tomorrow is supposed to be sunny next couple of days is supposed to be sunny and that'll help dissolve the sugar right and i'm going to give it a shake or two in the next couple of days and get all the sugar dissolved in there and just let it sit for a while okay so that's our most recent addition to our liqueur cabinet and we got some vodka left now take a look at that that was 40 ounces so we used about half of that so 20 ounces went into that okay and this one is the lemon liqueur that i made how many years ago i don't know 10 years ago now right and it's got vodka up to there it's very sweet so i'm going to fill it up okay so let's do that because this one is amazing it's totally medicinal and it's been a while i've been meaning to get some vodka to fill this up and i've just been running out making other types of liqueurs so all we're going to do is just fill this baby up and once i fill it up i'm going to give it a gentle shake now this thing's missing the seal i gotta go get myself another seal and i'm going to give it a gentle shake not too much because it will leak out uh, and it's enough to fill it up very nice very nice okay that's good we'll keep this much vodka for later use where do we put the lid here's the lid okay and what i'm going to do is once i get the seal for this i'm going to give it a little bit of a shake okay and then i'm going to taste it and if the sweetness is not there if I need it to be a little bit sweeter, I doubt it if I'm going to add any more sugar. But if I need to make it a little bit sweeter, I'll just add half a cup of sugar or a quarter cup of sugar and let it sit in the sun and give it a shake. Okay, so our lemon liqueur is back. Very nice, very nice. It's always good to keep the liqueur cabinet stocked up because every now and then when we have friends coming over and stuff, they sort of sit there and, you know, they ask us what type of i offer them liqueur and they say hey what type of liqueur you have well how about some lemon liqueur right it's beautiful and you can eat these lemons of course right taste fan fan fantastic okay so we ended up getting ourselves let's put this guy here and definitely going to be giving this a little shake here and there in the next couple of days just to get the sugar dissolving we can do it even more now the more you do it you can actually do a fair bit of shaking right now to get the cornelian cherries or to get the sugar dissolving in there right take a look okay and then rotate it again and the sugar slowly starts selling down the bottom it's not going to dissolve too much because the cornelian cherries are came out of the fridge so they're cold okay uh, but very happy to have a new supply of cornelian cherries going 
for making jam and for making liqueur this liqueur is going to last us a while so if i get the chance next year maybe i'll make another batch of this because we do go through this fairly rapidly when we do have it right we you know the old ones have been spent for a couple of years but i've still been sampling them because they still have the cornelian cherry flavor to them it's been decreasing a lot over the last couple of years two or three years but they still had it in there so i was still replenishing them a little bit with a little bit of alcohol but they're very happy to have a fresh fresh batch going i'll probably do it again next year once we in september once we harvest again uh for the next season right uh aside from that uh, i just want to show you guys this we did shoot i did edit uh, not edit but we did a live stream of our previous liqueur video and i uploaded the live stream version but i haven't edited that version yet where we made the pineapple liqueur and uh what was the other liqueur we made, we made pineapple and blackberry liqueur right so at some point i'm gonna go and edit that video and upload that video as well so there might be a liqueur video coming up sooner rather than later but i thought i'd shoot this uh you know quick video just to show you the cornelian cherries being uh, prepped uh, and turning them into a liqueur because the odds are you're going to see me um, drinking some cornelian cherries either in the videos that we're editing or during the live streams right i'm going to start sampling this probably within the month that's about it that's what i wanted to show you guys just so you know when you see the cornelian cherry liqueur pop up when we made it and today september 21st 2019 and the odds are we'll have at least at least five six seven years of good cornelian cherry drinking to do with this batch and next year and for sure next year i'm gonna go get myself another harvest and have a con companion jar to this as well that way we got two cornelian cherry um, jars going because this is one of the cures when i do have it i do sample it a fair bit it's good for the tummy it's good for digestion and it's got a very very unique flavor and very few people have ever tasted anything like this so when we get friends coming over i mentioned i got a little bit of cornelian cherry most people are like what's a cornelian cherry and i show it to them i give them a little sample and they're they're like wow absolutely amazing right absolutely amazing okay i hope you're gonna enjoy your fall uh thank you for being here i hope you enjoyed your summer of 2019 and for those of you who've been building your liqueur collections uh i hope you're enjoying the process and enjoying the flavors okay that's it for now gang i'll see you guys in the next video